Hello everyone. Welcome to the Church 360 Unite webinar for users, directory, and mailings. Hi, my name is Rod Kyles and I am the Customer Onboarding Specialist for Concordia Technology Solutions. I kindly ask that you mute your phones or microphones and type any questions you may have into the question window. Um, I do answer these questions in the order that they are received and um, I answer all the questions at the end of class. So if you have any questions along the way, um, please go ahead and type those in and I'll definitely answer those um, when we get to the question and answer session. This webinar is broken down into um, three parts. So we have the outline where we briefly discuss what we're going to cover. Then we'll transition over into the software where we will um, go through each one of these items in our outline. And then we'll, the third part is going to be our question and answer session. So well, let's go ahead and go through the outline. So um, today's class we're going to discuss um, user management and permissions. So we'll show you how to invite people into the site and um, set up their permissions. So um, that should be exciting. Then after that, we're going to go through and um, discuss uh, mailings and the email logs. So recently we've added in the uh, new email log feature and um, we're excited to show that to everyone. So after that, there will be the uh, members directory where each person who's a uh, member of your site there will show on your members directory. So. And um, the final step will be our question and answer session. So um, if you're ready, I'm ready. So let's get started here. Go ahead and switch over to Church 360 members and everybody should be able to see my um, Church 360 Unite site. We do have a custom domain, so it does say ChristBakersville.org um, up here at the top forward slash home. But um, once we log in, um, you'll be able to see that, hey, this is just the login for a 360 United site. So I'm going to click sign in here on the right-hand side. And um, I have a little banner here from signing out earlier. But um, I can type in an email address or username, and I can also type in the password, which will help me log into the system. So um, if I want to stay uh, logged in basically indefinitely, then I can use the Remember Me option. That will keep me logged in. Um, and once I sign in, um, I'll be signed into the system. But there's also a forgot your password, so if for some reason you or um, one of the users that will be um, inviting to the system here in just a few minutes um, forgets their uh, password, then they can um, request that password be reset. Um, basically, you'll click on the forgot your password link, type in the email address that's tied to your Church360 Unite login, um, and send the request and then you'll receive an email with a link in it. You'll click that link. It will take you um, to 360 Unite where you can then um, create your uh, new password. So let me click the back arrow here to take me back to the previous page. You can also um, sign in with your Facebook or Google account as well. So I'm just going to log in as the uh, sysadmin here and then that's going to take me into the program. And once I log in, um, Across the top, you'll see your admin bar, um, and the items that you see across the top are controlled by the permissions you have when you log into the software. So since I'm logged in as uh, Pastor Kent, he's an administrator inside of the system, then I'm going to see pages, post activity, users, themes, and settings. If I am a publisher and not an administrator, so basically I'm one notch down on the um, hierarchy there for um, rights then um, I won't see um, users, themes, or settings, but um, I'll still be able to see activity there, um, activity, post, and pages. And then if I'm a user, I won't see the admin bar at all. So, um, And we'll discuss the uh, permissions a little bit more here in just a second. Um, then below that, you're going to see your main menu bar, and then those are the pages that your users will be able to um, access and, um, and see those options. So um, let's go to users here at the top inside of our um, admin bar. And when the user page appears, um, you're going to notice a couple things right off the bat. Um, it does say users here on the left, but there's users and mailing lists. So that's one little nuance or one change that's been made with the, um, with the uh, redesign here. They've um, taken mailings from the 
admin bar and placed it over here as a tab underneath users. So I'm across the top, there's going to be filter by name, where you can um, type in a few characters and find a person's um, record here inside the system. Um, on or further on the right hand side, it's going to say listing everyone from Church 360 members account. Um, Church 360 Unite and Church 360 members, they share the same database. So um, any information that's put into Church 360 members, um, or any at least these people information that's put into Church 360 members, will flow over to Church 360 Unite. And then if you make a change to that information in Church 360 Unite, that information will flow back over to Church 360 members. So um, when it comes to the data, it can be updated in either place, and that data is shared. So, um, you know, if a member of the church went in here and added in an email address or a phone number, that would automatically flow over to the record. So, okay. Um, below that, you're going to see your column headers. There's going to be name, email address, um, role, last sign-in, and listed. And if you click on those column headers, it'll actually sort by the column headers. It is necessary to have an email address, and um, that email address does have to be unique within the database for you to, um, to be able to log into Church360 Unite. So um, when it comes to this, um, you know, if you have a husband and wife and they share an email address, you would need to create a new one um, for one of the two spouses there um, because the email address is what allows you to reset the password. So it does have to be unique. So um, please make note of that. Um, to the right of email is role, and that's going to be your role within the church. And if you sort by that, you can see your administrators. Um, you can see who doesn't have rights. And um, as you scroll down, it now has infinite scroll. You can scroll down and see who's publishers and who are users. To the right of that is going to be last sign in. That's going to tell you the last time that somebody signed into the system. And um, it just keeps track of that. So you can actually tell who's using the site and who's not. And then to the right of that, there's the listed column. And listed tells um, the administrators or the, uh, tells the administrators who is going to show on the directory. So uh, we'll show the directory here in just a second, but this will specify whether or not um, that person is shown in the directory. So when users log in to see the directory, whether or not um, this person is listed. So you'll notice how um, Susan Abbott does show in the directory, but Janice Albers does not show in the directory. So um, you'll notice a series of checkboxes that run down the left-hand side. And um, checking those boxes will apply the actions across the bottom to um, that person. So um, let's use uh, Jack Wilson here. And if I check Jack Wilson's name and I go down to the bottom and I click Change Role, then um, that's going to give me the option to um, select the type of permissions that I want to give him. So none means that he can't log into Church 360 Unite. User means that he can log into Church 360 Unite and see the um, pages that are going to be shared within the um, private part of the website. Um, underneath Publisher, that means that the person will be able to edit content, um, and they would be able to edit any content on the website. And um, when it comes to content, um, Sometimes you want them to be able to edit certain pages. If that's the case, then you're going to want to mark the person as a user and then make them a group leader so that they can just edit the pages within that group. So publisher can edit any content on the site, and a group leader can um, edit content within that group. And then below that is going to be administrator, and that means that that person will have the ability to um, – manage any part of the system, any part of your Unite site. So let's say that Jack's going to be a user. Um, if Jack does not have an email address, you can type the email address here in, um, in the box. Um, if they have an email address inside of Church360 members or Church360, I'm sorry, Church360 members or Shepherd staff, that email address will flow over and it will show up here um, so that you can just send the invite out to that email address. So I'm just going to type in Jack Wilson at mail.com, which would be his email address, and click update. And then an invite will go over to um, an invite will go over to his email address. So um, that invite has been sent. So um, I have an invite here inside of my window 
and um, let me double click on that. And um, with that invite, it's going to look just like this. Um, and basically, you would click on accept the invitation, and that would take you back to the website and um, allow you to set up your password. So I'm going to go ahead and close that, and we'll get rid of that window. And then um, once the person has been invited, they'll be able to log into the system and access the um, information that's being provided there on the site. Um, the stuff that's not public, the stuff that's actually marked as um, members only, so it'd be marked as private. And we'll show more of that here in just a second. Okay. Um, there's three other action buttons across the bottom to make note of. There is list and unlist. And earlier I was saying how Janice Albers um, does not show on the directory. Excuse me. Okay. Um, earlier I was talking about um, listed or unlisted, and we're showing here that Janice Albers is not going to show on the directory. So um, if that situation changed, like Janice and Jim um, did decide to show um, their names on the uh, on the website on the directory. Um, I could check the boxes here on the left hand side, click list, and then um, they would get little check boxes over here, then they would actually show on the directory. So um, those um, boxes are kind of like the opposite of each other. So if you want to unlist them, you'll click unlist, and if you want to list them, you'll click list. Then if we want to um, delete somebody from the site, we can use the delete button. Um, I would make note that if you are linked with Church360 members, deleting a person here in Church360 Unite will delete that person from Church360 Church members as well because it is a shared database. So we just want to be careful about that action. And if the person um, doesn't want their name shown on the directory, then just unlist them. So um, then they could still be in the members database and you could still have those records there. Okay, um, over here on the left hand side underneath users, there's going to be mailing list. And mailing list is where you're going to communicate with your congregation. And there's um, the ability to create your own mailing list. You can type in the name and click create mailing list. We have um, quite a few mailing lists that we've created here along the way. Um, to kind of show how the mailing list works. So um, the example that we'd like to show is Bible studies. And um, you can just type in Bible studies and click create mailing, um, mailing list. And then it's going to jump all the way down here to the bottom. So I'm going to refresh my screen here. And um, so that it appears here at the top and it's a little easier to see. So um, once it's here, you can click in the body of that area and it'll open up the inline editing. And when it comes to, excuse me one more time. Sorry about that. Um, when it comes to your mailing list, the mailing list can be comprised of three different components. So um, you can, inside of your mailing list, just type the names of the individuals that you want on the mailing list. So you can click in the body there, or click in the field, and type in um, Jack Wilson. And then you could type in the next name. You could type in his um Nancy must not be on the site. Um, and then you can type in the next person that you want. So let's select Candace. And then it would be so on and so forth from there. So you can type in the individual's names and add them to the um, Bible Studies mailing list. And let me add Pastor as well, since he'll be um, participating inside of those lists there. Oh, so he's going to be participating in the Bible Studies. But in addition to... Um, individuals, you can also add groups. So um, with the groups, if you had a small group or if you had a Bible study group, um, let's select Vacation Bible School, you can add a group and you can also add other newsletters or other mailing lists. So I'm just going to type newsletter. So um, with this list here, you can add individuals, you can add groups, and you can add newsletters. Um, you can add mailings, and all three of those will combine into one 
mailing list. So I'm going to click Save here on the right. And then when I check that mailing list here on the left-hand side and click Email, that's going to send an email out to my default email client. And um, when you're uh, using Windows or if you're using a Mac, um, your default email client will be determined by the operating system. Um, we have Windows here, so um, when it passes it over, uh, typically it'll go to um, Outlook. Um, Windows 10 has a program called Mail. Um, it'll pass over to one of the desktop options. Um, you can set the browser to um, send that request out to your um, Google account or to your Yahoo um, email account or to your AOL account, just depending on the web browser. So it doesn't have to be a desktop option. You know, you can send it to a web-based email if you'd like. Um, when the email shows up at this point, you'll have the ability to um, see how it's compiling all of those email addresses into what we call an email relay. And it's just going to have the um, domain name at relay.360unite.com. And um, what this does is it uh, cloaks all the email addresses so that whoever you send it to doesn't get the full list of email addresses and can um, spam out to those addresses. So um, you can copy and paste this email relay. It, you know, when it compiles it together, it does have all the email addresses in there, but they are encrypted. So then if it was going to be your newsletter, um, you could type in the date. And then um, you could use an attachment if you wanted to attach a newsletter um, to the email, and then you could send out the email. So, and then simply click send, and then that'll go out to your congregation. So I'm going to close this um, window right here and say no, I'm not going to um, spam those out. And um, that's how you would send out a mailing list. So I'm going to close these little boxes here. Um, let me go over to pages here on the left-hand side. And um, just a very brief overview of pages since we're going to be going to the members directory. Um, whenever you're in pages, so you're going to have your active menu items and your um, available menu items. And there's four different types of pages. There's um, just regular static pages where you'll put content on those pages. Um, there'll be feed pages or blog pages, and they'll, be, they'll have the little symbol of a page with um, a little tag that's been inserted into that page. There's your calendar pages, and there's your member page. And the one we're going to be focusing on today is going to be your members page. And um, with the members page, you'll notice um, over here on the right-hand side how it says members only. So that means that you'll actually have to log into the site to be able to um, see the content on these pages. So any page that says members only, you have to log into the site or you have to be invited and have created a login to be able to see that information. Um, you may also notice that there's a draft page down here. Um, the statuses of the pages here are controlled by the action button down here. Um, when it comes to the members page, that page can never be made public. It will always be private. Um, it's locked into that status. To be able to access the members page, you can click on the um, hyperlink below the word members, and then that will take you over to the page. Um, I would also note that, let me go back to pages just a second, that um, if you look at the navigation here on the left-hand side, you'll notice that um, there's these kind of like accordion folders, and those accordion folders are going to be your categories or your containers. And um, we can say that the members um, page is inside of the connect folder. So if I go up here and click on this little X to the right of pages, um, and if I go, if I hover over connect, I'll be able to see my members page and click on that link and that'll take me to this page. Um, so once you're on the members page, um, you'll notice here on the right hand side that there's an invite members button. So if you have somebody who you'd like to invite to Unite, you can click on that link and that would um, take you back to users where you can um, invite that person. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. 
then um, you'll also see over here on the right hand side that there's a little link that says members only and that's just to remind everybody that this page is only seen by members of your church. Um, below the uh, page title of members it's going to say filter directory and um, you can type in a few characters and find um, someone who you're looking for so it does have infinite scroll so it'll allow you to scroll all the way down to the last household within your directory but if you want to find them quickly you can just type in the uh, type the filter box there to filter this directory. Um, the first family here and we'll use them for our example is going to be the Abbott family and um, for the Abbott family there's going to be Sue, Lacey, and Jacob and um, you'll notice that only three of the family members are showing here. Um, there's actually four family members in the Abbott household and let me go back up to users here just a second and um, you'll you, you may or may not have noticed, but for David Abbott, he's actually the uh, head of that household. He's marked as unlisted. So um, if I check on David's name and click on list, um, a little green check will appear, then that will mark him as listed. So I'm going to close this and um, just refresh my screen here for members. And then um, Dave's going to show up now. So that's how the... Um, how the list and unlist works. So you can, um, you know, have um, those individuals unlisted. And if I unlisted all of the uh, family members, then the household would not appear either. So um, you'll notice here as I hover over the information that um, there's little hyperlinks here and the uh, little click finger appears. If I click on the household name, then that's going to allow me to go in and view the members of the household and their contact information. So I do have some information that's unlisted here, like phone numbers and email addresses. You can also mark the address as unlisted as well. Um, from here, if I wanted to edit the household information, I can click on Edit Household, and I can go in and um, update or change this information. Um, if I make a change here, I would note that that does change the information in Church 360 members as well. So, um, you know, you just want to be careful um, and, and know the results of what's going to happen. So updating it from here isn't a problem. Um, and, you know, maybe sometimes it'll be preferred because you're actually seeing this information. But um, you just want to know that it's going to change the information within Church 360 members as well. Then down here at the bottom, um, these are going to be the household members, and you can drag and drop to um, change the uh, household sequence, their position or place within the family there. So, um, and that just changes the order that you see the family um, throughout the program. And once you change that, you can say update household, and then um, now Jacob would be above Lacey here. So, um, at this point, you can also go in and edit the um, individual's records as well. So if I click on Dave here, that would take me to his profile view where, um, where I'll have his name, um, cell phone number, there's email addresses. If I click on the email addresses or on an email address, that will launch my um, default email client and allow me to send an email to Dave. Um, on the right hand side, if I want to actually edit his profile, I can click edit my profile and from there I can go in and make changes. Now, when it comes to making changes, the administrator will be able to go in and update these records, but also the user will be able to log in and update um, their record as well. So um, if they got a new phone number or an email address, they could go into here and um, add that information into the system. Okay, um, up here at the very top, um, there is a profile icon or a profile picture, and if I click on the profile picture here, then um, that's going to give me a chance to um, change the image here, and um, at that point, you know, it could be a default icon, which is just going to be the silhouette. Um, if you have a Gravatar, uh, that Gravatar can be imported. The Gravatar is a um, image of you that follows you around the web. So you can go to gravatar.com, um, add an image, then when you post content around the web, your picture will show up. So um, it's been around for quite a while. It's popular in some, some circles there. Below that is custom, and custom allows you to upload um, a photo for this person. And then you can just, once you've made any changes, you can update profile. So um, running down the right-hand side, there's also the um, groups that you belong to. 
So um, these are the groups that Dave belongs to, and then there's links that actually take you over to that group. And if there's any post within Church 360 um, Unite, um, you'll be able to um, view those posts underneath here and then click on them and take a, look, a closer look at them. So I'm going to go back to our members directory here. And um, underneath members directory, there's um, one other thing I wanted to show. There is the hyperlink here um, that allows you to show where that person lives. So if you click on the address, that does jump you over to Google Maps, where you'll be able to see where they live. And if you wanted to, um, this was a pastoral visit, you know, pastor would be able to um, use the uh, Google Maps option here on the right-hand side to find directions and um, go visit David. So I'm going to close that tab, and let me go ahead and scroll down a little bit so that everyone can see what the directory would look like, and um, you'd be able to see phone numbers and addresses and stuff like that. Um, up at the top, there is Settings, and there's also Kent. If I click on Settings, that right there will allow me to um, – go in and change the email address that's tied to my login. Um, I can also add a username and change my password if need be. Um, and if I wanted to link this to my Facebook and Google account, I can do that from here as well. And if I click on Kent here, the first name, that takes me over to the uh, profile that I'm logged in as. And um, one thing that's different when you're on your profile, and I'm going to click Edit Profile here on the right-hand side, um, versus being an administrator and being on somebody else's profile is the fact that down at the bottom there's this member directory and it's going to say I'd like to be seen in the membership directory and this checkbox is only available to um, a user who's logged in so if you're an administrator you go to your profile that checkbox will be there for you but it won't be anywhere else throughout the program and this allows um, the person who's logged in the right to hide themselves um, from the directory. So um, the administrator can hide people um, through request, but if somebody decides that they just simply don't want to be on the directory, they can um, uncheck this box and then, um, then it, um, at that point it cannot be overwritten. The only person that can override it is the person who is logged into the software. So it, it gives the um, person who's logged in control over whether or not their information is seen on the web. So, And that was the uh, last piece of information that I had to share there. Uh, let me go back to the uh, PowerPoint presentation and um, open up the question and answer session. Do you have any questions? And I did see a, a couple appear here on the right-hand side. And um, let me go ahead, and before people start dropping off, and if they, I do want to thank everybody for attending. For attending. Um, we really hope that you enjoyed this class, and um, if you have any further questions, of course, after the question and answer session, you can um, call us at 1-800-346-6120, or you can email us at support at cts.cph.org. Um, and the... Uh, First question is from Kim, and it's um, how do you change the default email account to say um, to a Hotmail account? And um, that all depends on the web browser that you're using. Um, probably the best bet to get that set up for you is um, I'll take your email address and name, and I'll pass it on to the support team and have them email you instructions for um, setting up. Um, Hotmail as your default email client. And some web browsers um, work a little bit better with different um, different email accounts or different email providers. So um, it may be a situation with Hotmail, you might have to use Firefox to uh, set that up. But um, what we'll do is we'll pass that information on to get you taken care of. Um, the next question, oh, thanks, Kim. Um, the next question is from Joanne. And um, can you print the Google map um, for a member's address? Um, I believe so. Let me switch back to, let me switch back and I'm going to click on the address. Let me, members, click on the address here. And once you um, set up the directions, 
I believe you can go to the um, three little bars over here on the right hand side then go to print and then that will set up your um, your print view where you can print out the Google map so yes um, the next question is from Sharon and um, Sharon says, um, I'd like to be seen in the membership directory um, is not showing up on my membership profile. Um, what you'll have to do, Sharon, is um, when you're logged in, it's going to say welcome, then it's probably going to say Sharon. And if you click on Sharon there and then edit your profile, it'll uh, show down at the bottom at that point. And let me know if that works for you there. Um, The next question is from Heather, and uh, thanks, Heather. Um, if a user makes any changes, you, um, you said changes are automatically made to Church 360 members, but does it change anything in Shepherd Staff when syncing them together? Very good question. Good catch. Um, when you make the changes in 360 Unite, um, the changes... And, oh, let me start over. Um, if you're using Unite and Shepherd Staff together, and then someone makes a change for like the contact information inside Church 360 Unite, that information is not automatically pushed over to Shepherd Staff, but there is a sync utility inside of Shepherd Staff. When you run that sync utility, it will um, pull the information down from Church 360 Unite and allow you to review that information if you agree with the changes you can accept them and import those into Shepherd Staff so the answer is yes um, it's just not automatic it's um, you'll you'll go through the process and I think you're familiar with that um, and then it'll sync that information down so yes um, oh thanks for the follow-up Kim yes I'll definitely pass that information on to the programmers our uh, programmers to the uh, software support technicians and um, oh thanks Sharon oh my screen doesn't show welcome Sharon oh your screen doesn't say welcome Sharon um, do me a favor Sharon and hmm if it doesn't say welcome I think you're not logged in yet so make sure you're logged in. Hmm. That doesn't sound quite right either. Um, let me pass that on to the support team as well. We have uh, four support technicians, and um, we can contact them and have them find out why you're um, welcome button. Yes, you're logged in. Understood. Yeah, it, it should be showing, you know, like it should have the name there, and you can click on it and go to that option. Um, I wonder if I resize my screen here, if that'll make it disappear. Nope. Um, I will definitely pass that on to the um, software support team and have them contact you. I'm not sure why your button's not showing up there, but it definitely should be showing up there, so we'll get that fixed for you. Thanks, Sharon. Okay, well, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to hang on just for a second here. And um, if there aren't any other questions, I'll sign off here in just a second. So give somebody else a chance to type in another question. Oh, um, thanks, Kim. Yes, um, if you make changes in Shepherd Staff, those changes are pushed up to Church 360 Unite when you run the sync utility. So when you receive those address changes from the church members and you um, enter those into the system, you would then go into, um, go into the uh, membership module for Shepherd Staff and then, you know, pull up the Church 360 Unite sync utility, run that utility 
and it will um, push that information up to Church 360 Unite. So, yes, yeah, you are correct. And great questions, everybody. Um, okay, let me switch back here. So if you, um, so when you log into Church 360 Unite, there should be this little block here at the upper right. And it should say welcome, your first name, then it should also have settings and sign out. And then, you know, clicking on your name should take you to your profile. I will, um, I'll pass your information on to the uh, support team as well, Joanne. And I, I wonder if... It, and it may turn out that one of the themes doesn't support the name being there, but I th I'm pretty sure I'd seen it on all of the themes. But we'll definitely, and if anybody else doesn't, you know, name isn't showing, let me know, and we'll uh, get to the bottom of this, and we'll we'll figure out what's going on. Oh, thanks, Kim. Oh, yes. Um, the uh, Reformation page, Kim, um, I did talk to my, um, well, my former manager, he's in, like in a different department now, but I talked to uh, Peter Frank and um, he said that we can do that, we just need to uh, gather a little bit more details. So um, I'll shoot you an email on that and um, yeah, I'll give you a call about that and we can um, look into it further and find out exactly like where you want it and what position of the page. Um, what you want that counter to look like. We can, um, he said we can do it, and um, it's just a matter of gathering a little bit more detail. So, yeah, awesome. Oh, thanks, Kim. Oh, um, good, a good follow-up question, Joanne. Um, Joanne says, uh, might it be um, if you sign in as an administrator that you don't have it? Um, no, because I'm signed in as Kent Williams, and he's an administrator, and he has that link. So um, I'm wondering, um, I'm wondering what's causing that. So, but we'll definitely find out. Oh, Joanne found it. Way okay, understood. Okay, Joanne was able to find it. She said it was way up on her page. So, um, and we'll have to figure out what's going on. Um, with the other user there, so. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I really appreciate everybody's time. I'm going to sign off, and I will talk to everybody soon. Thanks, everyone. Oh, one more question here. Okay, uh, can I remove someone from Church 360's um, Church 360 Unites membership list from Shepherd Staff? Yes, you can. That's a really good question. Um, inside of Shepherd Staff, and I'm going to open up Shepherd Staff here. Inside of Shepherd Staff, you can specify um, that that person is no longer synced to Unite. So inside Shepherd Staff, if you go to Membership, and um, inside Membership, you um, let's click on the Abbots here. So I could go to Dave Abbott here. And I apologize, I didn't prep the uh, Shepherd Staff database beforehand, but... Um, when you're on the other tab, there's a checkbox that says show this person in Church 360 Unite. So unchecking that box means that the next time you sync, that individual will not be shown in um, Church 360 Unite. So it'll take them off of the site. So good question. Good question. I'm going to add that to my notes.
Okay. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close down the session, and I will talk to everybody soon.